I thank the member for Braden, the manager of opposition business. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I seek leave to move the following motion. That the House notes that the Honourable Dyson Hayden, ACQC, has agreed to speak at a Liberal Party fundraiser on Wednesday, 26 of August 2015, at Castle Ray Boutique Hotel in Sydney. B. The invitation to the Liberal Party fundraiser states that, and I quote, cheques should be made payable to the Liberal Party of Australia New South Wales Division. And C. The invitation also states all proceeds from this event will be applied to state election campaigning. And accordingly, this House declares that by his own actions, the Honourable Dyson Hayden, ACQC, has disqualified himself from conducting the Prime Minister's Royal Commission into trade unions. The Manager of Government Business. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Given that we are debating the 100th anniversary of the landings at Gallipoli in this chamber, there are appropriate times to move such a motion or seek leave. At 20 past 11 on Thursday is not the appropriate time. You can withdraw that. You'll withdraw I'll ask that. The, the manager for opposition business, uh, leader of the government, sorry, I'll ask the member for Rankin to withdraw that comment. Withdraw. Thank the member for Rankin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I am, I am making the point that. There are appropriate times to move such a resolution and to seek leave to move such a resolution. Now is not the time to do it in a debate about the 100th anniversary of the landing of Gallipoli, and therefore leave is not granted. And I would recommend to the manager of opposition business that he perhaps come back later in the day and move a motion if he wishes to do so, but leave will not be granted at this point in time. I thank the The leave is not granted. The understanding order 47, uh, you can't seek leave to move a suspension of standing orders when there is business before the House. It must be relevant to any business under discussion to the House. So then leave is not granted. So the, the, I'll give the call to the Manager of Opposition. Thank you. I move that standing order 47C1 and, other so much, and so much of other standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the manager of opposition business from moving the following motion forthwith. One, the House notes that the Honourable Dyson Hayden ACQC has agreed to speak at a Liberal Party fundraiser on Wednesday, Wednesday 26 of August 2015 at the Castle Ray Boutique Hotel in Sydney. The invitation to the Liberal Party fundraiser states that cheques should be made payable to Liberal Party of Australia New South Wales Division. The invitation also states all proceeds from this event will be applied to state election campaigning. Two, accordingly, the House declares by his own actions Dyson Hayden has disqualified himself from conducting the Prime Minister's Royal Commission into trade unions. He is conflicted. He is biased. The Royal Commission is a farce. Dyson Hayden is in a position now where he cannot remain in that role. And the sham that we have said for so long this Royal Commission was has now been found out and exposed to have somebody who the Prime Minister held up as allegedly being impartial. Now to have a situation where he is promoting the, the Liberal Party, being the guest, the draw card for a yeah. Liberal Party fundraiser, the, is an absolute the disgrace. Those of opposite are afraid of this debate. Those opposite have got to shut this debate the down. The but the people know bias when they Don't see it, and the Australian the people will understand exactly I'll what's going on. With a royal commission reeked in bias, a royal commission, the royal commission are completely conflicted. When a procedural motion is being moved, the speaker moving it should be given the call. I don't but I note that you've now given me the call, and I move well, the member be no me. longer heard. First I also notice is... you defied the speaker.
question is that the member no longer be heard, and I'll disregard that last remark, and you should be very careful. And I don't need any comments from you either, because you would know that I am in the chair. I have the ruling. I have not given moved over for the speaker, who is now here. But the question is that the member no longer be heard. All those that opinion say aye. No, no, no. Stop. To the contrary, no. No. I think the ayes have it. The no, no. noes have it. Division required. Thank you. Uh, on advice of the clerks, the clerks have indicated that correctly that suspension of uh, standing orders cannot be done at this stage under this this way, and therefore uh, we've got to rule it out of order and return to the business. Oh. The member for Grainland. Point of, point of order, Mr. Speaker. I've got the call. Point of order. The motion moved by the manager of opposition business seeks to suspend the standing order that is relevant to that ruling. It is perfectly within order for the manager of opposition business to put before the House the motion that he has. What is before the chair is then the leader of the House is moved that the manager of opposition business be no longer heard. You actually put that to the uh, House and had a vote on it, and I believe we're about to call for a division on that, and that is what should occur before the House right now, because otherwise, otherwise it is uh, uh, subverting the will of the House. It is perfectly in order at any time for the House to control its own destiny, which is why we have moved yeah, yeah, yeah. through the Manager of Opposition Business the suspension of standing orders, including that suspension of standing order 47C. I thank the member for Grainland, but I think that I will stick with the ruling that uh, you can't suspend standing orders at this time in the middle of business before the House. So we'll return to the business before the chair, which is the motion be agreed to. The member for Grayland, another Mr. point? Speaker, perhaps it would be in order, given that in terms of the decorum of the House that the Speaker resumed the chair. Um, no, no, I don't. I, I, want, I want to assert I want to, I, I want to assert <laughs> the primacy the primacy of members of this parliament over the conduct of this parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is what I want to assert. It's a very important principle. In practice, in practice the clock's ticking on the 25-minute time limit for the suspension that's been moved by the manager of opposition business, but it is a very important principle that at any time uh, people uh, are allowed to take actions in accordance with the procedures uh, that are allowed for in this House. Uh, what would not be appropriate would be, and in the past, as if a member was interrupted while they were speaking to move a suspension, but it is perfectly in order to interrupt in between speakers to move a suspension, including a suspension of the standing order that provides for the suspensions of standing orders to be ordinarily conducted uh, at a change of business. That is the normal procedure. But given that there is no change of business envisaged before the parliament, with the current item that is before the parliament until it, uh, until it uh, concludes at 5 p.m., that is why the opposition have taken uh, this decision. I thank the member for Grainland. Further to the point of order? Yes, Mr. Second Deputy Speaker. I think for the elucidation of the opposition and for the House, the reason why oppositions routinely move such suspensions at 
nine o'clock straight after prayers, for example, is because it's before the, the business of the day has begun. That is the reason why members of the opposition have done that. And as a manager of opposition business in the House myself in the past, uh, and as a member of the opposition, it was always my understanding that if there was to be a suspension of standing orders moved, it needed to be between two items of government business. And at nine o'clock, that was the usual time. Now, the matter, the fact is, it wasn't when a speaker sat down and before the next speaker got up in the middle of an item of business. So, I don't, I'm sure the opposition wants to fulminate about this matter. Uh, my suggestion is that they do so at the appropriate time, and that is when there is a changeover of items of business. I think you've made the right call, Mr. Second Deputy Speaker, and uh, they offer the government supports you in it. To the point of order. To the point of order, the manager of opposition business. Uh, thank you. If I can make a, a further submission in the light of what the Leader of the House has just said. The Leader of the House has just referred to ordinary routine. There is nothing routine about what the House is dealing with right now. Nobody had any way of predicting that the Commissioner would engage himself in Liberal Party fundraising. And the House has to have the right to be able to debate that issue. This is completely without precedent, completely without. And the House must be allowed to suspend the stand relevant standing order to have that debate, as we are told a free and open flowing debate is what's meant to happen. Well, it should be happening right now. And this is the one way for it to occur. We've moved the suspension of that very standing order. And the House must be allowed to have this debate. It must not be used by the Leader of the House to cover up the head of a royal commission engaging in Liberal Party fundraising. Thank the member for opposition. The call of the Second Deputy Speaker, the, uh, the truth is you, you've made a ruling. If the opposition wants to disagree with your ruling, uh, they need to move a, uh, a motion dissenting from your ruling. I, I think that would be unwise. My suggestion to them is if they wish to pursue this, they should do so at the next changeover of business, which I assume is two o'clock. They wish to do it at question time. We can have the debate then entirely as you wish to do so. You can ask a few questions to Deputy Leader. That's the, that's the greatness of this democracy. But we can't go on with endless discussions about this point of order. We can't go on with endless discussions about this point of order. Either they move a dissent from your ruling or we have to move on. Mr Second Deputy Speaker. I thank the Leader of Government Business. In light of the debate, I will stick with my ruling that stands at the suspension cannot be done at this point of time uh, under Standing Order 47C1, and will return to the business before the chair. You haven't got the call yet, Dan. Just wait. So, the question before the, the chair is that the motion be agreed to, and I will call the member for warrant. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And on Saturday afternoon